welcome back to the orthopedic tutor channel today we'll be discussing about the other subtypes of osteosarcoma if you haven't checked out the previous video do log in and look at the oncology playlist there you will see the other parts of this osteosarcoma series well before we move on to today's topic which includes parosteal and periosteal subtypes of osteosarcoma i'm going to give you a quick look at these tables of comparison here as you can see here that these are the common subtypes of the osteosarcoma you have the conventional type conventional intramedullary type parosteal and also periosteal you need to know that basically these all have a very similar types of histopathology findings but usually in the pictures in the radiological pictures they are quite different because when you see an in classic intramedullary osteosarcoma, you can always see a bone producing lesion such as there. It appears white and it is usually located in the metaphyseal region of the bones with also specific locations, especially at the knee. And during when you evaluate other subtypes of uh, osteosarcoma, such as the periosteal or parosteal, at the periosteal, you could see that they are basically coming out of the periosteum. You could see here that the lesion uh, looks sort of like growing from the periosteal surface of the bones. And for the parosteal type, you could see that the lesion seems to stuck on the surface of the bone. And it also has a very, very specific locations, especially at the posterior distal femur. Now, judging from this uh histopathological findings you could see that the pictures here all looks a lot alike but and as you can see here that one of the characteristic findings of osteosarcoma is that if you see a osteopathic matrix and the the ones on my cursor here you see here uh, all this uh, sort of like homogeneous uh, pink like substance these are the osteoid and these are the cells as you can see there that there's also osteoid matrix all around the pink uh, homogeneous ones and these two here you could see it so it's very important to always notify your histopathologist uh, about the clinical findings and also the pathological findings of the radiograph in these subtypes of patient so that the pathologist can make a correct diagnosis and next, let us move on to the basic discussion regarding the parosteal and the periosteal type. Let us start from the parosteal type. So basically, uh, for these subtypes of tumor, you can find it at an age that is slightly older. As you remember, for the classic type, it is usually found on the second decade. As for the location, it is usually found on the surface. You need to remember it uh, because for the classic type, it comes from within the bone medulla. But for the parosteal type, you'll find it to be over at the surface of the metaphysis. And the locations are also very specific because it is usually located around 80% at the posterior aspect of the distal femur. Other locations shall include the proximal tibia and proximal humerus. The definition, well, it is a considered a low-grade type of osteosarcoma and it grows on the surface. And for the diagnosis, usually on the history taking, you may find that it sometimes is indeed painless. It usually low-grade tumor induced not much body reaction and therefore it is sometimes painless and usually only uh, patients complain maybe limited motion due to the mechanical effects of the mass itself over at the joint so sometimes patient may come with limited range of motion and palpable mass while on the plane radiography here we could see that with although these are considered the uh, low-grade type of tumor sometimes 17% of these tumor are high-grade malignancy and you can call them as a de differentiated type of parosteal osteosarcoma instead of the usual low-grade surface osteosarcoma remember only some subtypes are considered as 
malignancy and it is named as the differentiated type of osteo par osteal osteosarcoma and these are the pictures here as i mentioned before that the lesion is usually located over at the posterior aspect of distal femur well, for the plain radiography, you could also find that it is heavily ossified because once again, this is an osteosarcoma, then there should be bone formation over at the lesion. Where the CT is usually effective for pulmonary metastasis to screen for it, an MRI can show you how much uh, the soft tissue or marrow involvement is and it could also detect whether or not it, there is a skip lesion because as you know when there is a skip lesion then the anarching stage goes to anarching stage 3 the revised anarching classification the bone scan usually is always hot and the histology may sometimes be mistaken for fibrous dysplasia uh, there is rarely uh, there's some spindle cells as you know that uh, osteosarcoma mostly all have spindle cells they all have cellular atypia. Cellular atypia means that the cell itself is not uniform and you could see various sizes and shapes which in, uh, indicates that this is a malignancy. And there could be some re regularly arranged trabecular of bones there. So as for the differential diagnosis, you could sometimes mistaken it for fibrous dysplasia because of its sometimes similar histology. You could also mi mistaken it for myositis ossificans because the location of the, the bone itself, the tumorous bone itself is next to the bone you could also misdiagnose it with a osteochondral exostosis because the cortical bone is shared with the bone itself and this is the one of the table that differentiate most of them and shows which point is which it shows that bone or surface lesion cortex could come from barosteal or periosteal but it could also come from myositis ossificans which is a very benign condition it should all it can also come from other benign lesions such as osteochondroma but definitely the treatment with surgery is usually indicated in the parosteal or in the osteochondroma one but not in the myositis ossificant group okay moving on we'll go to the treatment discussion as you know that this is also considered a malignant tumor although it is a low grade tumor it is still not good if you just keep it around so you need to do a wide margin local surgical excision uh, and these are of course considered as a standard procedure for these patients and chemotherapy is generally not needed unless a high grade cellular component is seen and this is why it is very important to do a biopsy preoperatively to know that what are you actually dealing with and also it's important to improve obtain sample during surgery to show you how clear your margin is and also to see how much or how high the grading of the tumor is as you remember earlier in the previous videos or in the oncology basics videos i have covered what is actually grading as compared to staging it is a very different term in oncology and you should be familiar with those terms before you watch any further videos regarding tumors now for the post management generally 95 percent long-term survival if the local control has been achieved with uh, i'll shall put a note here that with a clear margin so once again you need to do a wide margin local surgical excision you need to check it afterwards with your pathologist to make sure that the tumor is taken whole and that is all for parosteal osteosarcoma and we'll move on to periosteal osteosarcoma as you can see here that for the periosteal type of osteosarcoma basically you can find it in a young age not like the ones in the parosteal as you can see it's rather at the third or fourth decade here but for the periosteal sarcoma is still at a young age and is considered extremely rare you need to know that the location of the lesion is not on the metaphysis or sometimes metaphysis but it could be found usually in the long bone diaphysis of the femur and tibia and that makes it quite different from the intramedullary osteosarcoma.
For the definition, well, it is considered an intermediate grade of osteosarcoma, all but also a variant of osteosarcoma, which is a surface one. Once again, if you do not, you are, if you are not familiar with the term intermediate grade, low grade, or high grade, you need to check out my previous videos. Uh, for the history taking, usually you could find pain or pathologic fracture over there. And for the physical findings, well, you can see sometimes the mass is quite big with regional swelling and also tenderness all around the area. And this is quite similar with other sorts of tumor and you cannot just differentiate and what tumor is what based on a clinical finding. But for the additional examination, this is where it gets interesting. For the plain radiography, you could see a classic sunburst appearance on also hair on end but here you could also see a saucerized cortical depression because remember this is a surface event and when a bone tumor grows it grows everywhere it grows outward it grows inward and as it go grows inward it will cause a saucerized depression over at the cortical bone and from the ct scan you should use it for staging and pulmonary metastasis there is of course something you need to do and bone scan should reveal that it is a very hot bone scan histologically from the gross findings it could be a lobular or cartilaginous lesion once again for the microscopic usually you could see osteoid but sometimes there is a chondroblastic matrix if you see a chondroblastic matrix for these sorts of patients with absolutely no osteoid then you could classify this initially suspected uh, periosteal osteosarcoma as chondrosarcoma instead remember that this is a intermediate lesion grade and the location is quite not similar with the other types of tumor in which you find it in the long bone and it grows on the surface instead of from within now for the periosteal sarcoma osteosarcoma usually you need to do a multi-agent chemotherapy followed by limb salvage resection and these are considered as a standard therapy regimen with uh, the all those different chemo regimen you could use preoperatively and postoperatively but generally the drugs are those three that i have covered in my previous osteosarcoma videos and here you could see that uh, the prognosis could be bad if there is the presence of the MDR gene because this gene allows the tumor cells to pump out all those chemo drugs that you have just wasted on the patient. It pumps them right out of the cell and it is also associated with 25% of primary lesion and also up to 50% of metastatic lesion. Well, I guess that is all for today's coverage, which is about the parosteal or the periosteal. Be sure to check out my part 3 osteosarcoma video, which covers the last type or the teleangiectatic type of osteosarcoma. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the Orthopedic Tutor channel. 